Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here. Welcome back to another Millwall Career Mode episode. It is Season 1, Episode 10. And into this episode, we've got two games in November, and then we're moving on into the December period. Obviously, where it gets really, really cold, as it is now in real life. So the first game of the episode is at home to Port Vale. They're 19th in the league table. So I'm going to be playing a pretty interesting team. Some players that did well in the last episode and some players that obviously deserve to be in the team. Then as we go down and onto the Wednesday, we're playing Coventry away from home. They are 15th in the league table and this away game could be a challenging test because Coventry, although they are low in the league table, they have pretty good members of their squad and I think this could be quite challenging. Then the final game of this episode, as I said, is in December and it is away from home in the FA Cup against Barnet Town and we have some interesting fixtures coming up obviously with a lot of games coming in the December period so all we can do now is we can look forward and we can go and get ready to show you the first team that's going to be playing in this episode against Port Vale so let's go do that Right, and so this is the team that's going to be playing the first game of the episode. So, obviously, as I said, it's against Port Val, and the team goes as follows. Jordan Archer in goal, he kept a clean sheet, so I think it's valuable to get him as experienced as they come. So, he's going to be re remaining in this team. The left back is Saborit. The two centre-backs are Nelson and Hutchinson, the captain. They remain the same, as does Cummins in the right-back slot. The right midfielder is Evans. As I said, I want to nurture him up, make him a lot better than what he already is. He's already looking good at being a 50-rated player. The two centre midfielders are Williams and Thompson. Williams obviously returning from his injury. The left midfield is Twaddock. He played well in the last game, and I really, really want to reward him for getting his first goal for the club. Then two strikers are Chietri and Fred. I think that, that could be a pretty lethal partnership, as Fred's good on the wing, but we haven't tested him with Chietri as a striker partnership. So, there's nothing more that we can say apart from well, let's just get into this game against Port Vale and see how it goes. On Port Vale are actually the lowest scoring team in the league. So hopefully that'll work in our favour in this game. Cummins will find Fred. Fred lays off to Sunil Chetri. Chetri with the shot, oh, just over the bar. And that is so unlucky. He was so close to scoring there. Fred. Oh, he's played it to Sunil Chietri. He's got to get past McIntosh, and he won't. He'll lay it off to Fred. Fred with the shot. There you go. It's 1-0 to the Lions. Sunil Chietri sets up Fred for the first goal of this episode. Can't say it wasn't deserved, to be honest. We have been playing pretty good. And, well, that certainly sparks the lead in this game. And I've got to say, we've been playing some nice football. Port Vale have done very limited stuff. Their keeper, Almwick, has been astounding so far. So finally, we've broken the deadlock. This could be interesting. And that's Fred's first goal in the league. Wow. That's quite unfortunate for him. He will be scoring more, though, if he plays. So scores on the doors at half-time. Gillingham are losing to Oxford United, a one that I'm very proud to say. We've then got Coventry are beating Bristol Rovers. And there is a 1-0 win for Swindon Town against Fleetwood at the moment. And the rest of the results, well, they're there. So if you'd like to see them, they're there for you to see right now. Now on to our game. We've been playing pretty well, I'm not going to lie. I've been very happy with the team. Obviously, we broke the deadlock just before half-time, so I'm very very happy with that we just have to see how the second half goes but if we play the same way i can't see us having a problem getting the three points in this match and obviously the next game is against coventry so that could be another one that could go the similar fashion if we keep playing the same football so let's just get into the second half and let's hope for some more football like this chietri to chris twaddock twaddock to find chietri again oh it just bounces to chietri so perfectly and he'll play it back for twaddock Twaddock's going to have the shot. That was a great block. He won the header, though. It's to Twaddock again. And has he scored? I do not believe it. That could be Chris Twaddock again getting his second goal for Millwall. My, oh my, the youngster is doing pretty well at the moment. This is a great time for him. He's coming to the team in the last game. And he's done it again. It is Twaddock. 
great, great times for him. I can't wait to see what he's like when he's actually at the rating of a first team member. He is doing very well, and that's a second goal in two games. Congratulations, Twilek. You're definitely putting in an effort to become a Millwall regular at the moment. He's going to find Mbamba. Mbamba over. Well, he's actually not gone over to anyone yet. He lays it off to Sincilia as well. Jordan Archer with a very comfortable save. Cummins to give it to Jonathan Evans. Evans back to Cummins. Cummins lays it to Fred. Fred back to Cummins. Cummins, oh my word, how did he miss that? That was crazy good. And he really should have scored there. Very, very unlucky by the right back. Probably Sid Nelson knows how to defend. He has been amazing in this game. Oh, and that's a great ball through to Fred. Fred back to Chietri. Sunil Chietri to find David Wall in a fantastic attacking position. Worrell cuts inside to Fran Vibala. Oh, and Fran Vibala puts it into the back of that. There we go. It is free now against Port Vale. And we are playing some great football. Perfect spot to find Wall on that side of the pitch. And then Vibala slotted it into the back of the net. Let's be honest. He's our best player at the club. Although he doesn't start every game, he definitely knows how to do great shots great goals he is the perfect midfielder and obviously he's taken his opportunity and it is actually his first goal to be fair but he is the one that's going to grow to the best potential at this club and then fred will play it over the top for sunil chietri did not expect him to be in this attacking position and chietri oh against the bar after anwick made the save Right, first and foremost, I think we played pretty well in that game. Obviously, it was helped by the fact that Port Vale don't really score goals going forward. But I'm really impressed with some of the members in the team. You've got Chris Twaddock, who's obviously stepping up to the plate in the left midfield spot. At the moment, no one can challenge him. As Ferguson has hot and cold periods. And then you obviously have Greg Wilde, who I haven't really, really, really got round to liking, to be honest. He's a really good player. I'm not going to lie, I do like him. I do think that he should play more in real life than Millwall. But I think that even when he played striker, he, he just didn't fit in. I, I don't get what that is. But obviously, we have Evans on the other side, who's looking pretty good as well. So the younger players are performing to the best of their ability. And obviously, Sid Nelson has become a first-team regular at the moment. So they are doing really well. We obviously got the next game against Coventry. So let's see the team selection for that game. And as I said, we've got to play Coventry next in the league. This is on a Wednesday, so it's really frustrating because we've had to play a few fringe players to get them through to play the next game. So this is how the team has gone. We put Tom King in the net because Archer is too crucial to not have at the moment. So he'll be playing in the Barnet game, obviously. Then we've got Ferguson at left back. Wanted to see how Fergie would play as left back with Wild as the left midfielder. Two centre-backs are exactly the same as the last game, with Nelson and Hutchinson playing there. That will probably be the partnership for the game against Barnet, but Nelson may be dropped depending on a few factors there. The right-back is Cummins. He will not be playing the next game, despite everything. I want Romeo to get a game against Barnet. Then we've got the left midfielder, as I said, was wild. Two centre-midfielders of Williams and Butcher. Butcher's coming for, obviously... Ben Thompson. Ben Thompson probably will get game time in that match, but I'm still not decided. The right midfielder is Aidan O'Brien. He's obviously replaced Evans. And the two strikers are Morrison and Fred. Now, Chietri's been taken out of the team, as have Twaddock, Evans and Archer. Now, the reason because of this is they're four important players to our team. And to be honest, I don't want them to have lack of energy for the game against Barnet. So that's the way it's going to go. King's going to get a step up to hopefully perform. And if we don't, well... It'll be a mistake on my behalf. So, let's see how we can do in our Bananas in Pyjamas kit. Let's get into this one. Butcher to Williams. Williams to try and find Steve Morrison, who actually beats the defender here. Steve Morrison with the shot. Reese Charles Cook with the save. They managed to scuffle the ball away. Draws are not my thing. And as I say that, Kyle Reid goes through. Can he score? Yes, he can. Wow, there you go. I told you playing King would be a bit of an issue and he's gone and actually given you the means to expect that I was right oh, I just can't so easy to say man he just didn't never mind we're 1-0 down obviously we're playing a weaker team this could be a problem but obviously we have players on the bench 
So we just have to see how it goes. We have got a second half to improve on this. And obviously with it being a Wednesday game and the fact that we need to catch up, there aren't many games going on. So Chesterfield are winning 2-1. They're above us. They're doing really well at the moment. Oxford are drawing 1-1 with Scunthorpe. And it's a 0-0 between Southend and Bristol Rovers. So they're the scores at halftime. Let's check out how we're doing against Coventry in this game. So it's fair to say it's been very, very equal. Obviously, I'm not performing to my best of my abilities at the moment. So I'm going to have to improve. Substitutions may make a difference in this match. But I really don't know. As I said, Coventry are a really, really awkward team because they're low in the league table quite a lot, but they do have some players that can make the difference. And as the player has in the first half, Reed scored and we're losing. So we'll have to see how this goes, try and get back in it in the second half. And well, if we lose, we lose. Obviously, we have to just fight back and try and get a win against Barnet. So let's see how we do in this second half. O'Brien. Back to Cummins. Cummins to find Fred. Fred, oh, he's still going with it. He's going to have the shot. Oh, and he puts it in the back of the net. There you go. We've got an equaliser. Happy, happy days. I am sitting here literally frustrated because we've literally not been able to get out of our own half for so long. And Fred's just gone and done that. So kudos to him for putting that into the back of the net. That's his second in the league, obviously. He's becoming a starlight player recently. This could be pretty interesting. We have to pay attention to how Fred's doing now because he is one for the future after all. He's now with Ruben Lamares, a pretty prolific player at a young age. I really do like him. I think he's a very good player at League One level. Oh, and there's a ball into the area. Could that be a penalty? It is. Oh, my my oh my oh my, I've been singing praises about Nelson all game and he goes and gives that away. Ah, oh, is this harsh? Yes, I think that's slightly harsh. But there's not more really that you can say and do about that. It's a penalty, we just have to see how it goes. So Tom King has the opportunity to become a hero against Marvin Sordell and of course he doesn't. Marvin Sordell scores against Millwall because fans really don't like Sordell. I'm not gonna lie, there's a certain bit of pain up here in my heart for the fact we gave away that penalty and we've blown our chance with this match. We really could have needed that point and we really could have done with not conceding a second. Then again, Kings in goal, he's not that good. I'm gonna be honest, but we just have to see if we can get another goal. It's unlikely, but we have to see. And that's Sordell's second. He probably scored the other one against us, to be honest, if I remember rightly. Ball. Can we win it back here? Well, we didn't commit the foul. And we've had a shot. The keeper makes a save. And Fred could score here. And he does. Aye, aye, aye. Controversy there. I don't really think I deserve to get that. I thought I found someone genuinely. And that's why I was quite shocked when I started having to talk about this. Let's look at it again. That should be a foul, surely. Wasn't given. Easy save. Fred turns it into the back of the net. We were handed a bit of luck. Obviously, I don't think the penalty was meant to be a penalty. So perhaps that's the way of getting a little bit of karma against us and then getting it back and making it equal. I don't know. We well, just have to hope we can keep this point. That's all I'm worrying about. We can still score a goal to win it, though. Let's not write that off. Let's stop them moving forward. No, that's not good. That is really not good. He comes across and... Ah! Of course he does. Come on, Tom King. Seriously. I've said this so many times about Tom. He's not a good keeper. He can't make the saves. So why on earth do I keep going back to play him? Ah, so frustrating. Sordell, the man that creates the opportunity. Obviously, very influential when he plays Millwall. And Gachev puts that into the back of the net. Can we get a third? Well... I don't know, that would be pushing it, but it would definitely make this game a lot more interesting. But it's really been a twist in the towel at every point in every opportunity in this match. And that will be Gachev's second in the league. Not too shabby, Alonso. Corners, though, are obviously a spin of the coin to see whether you can do it. And I honestly thought we had there Aiden O'Brien so close to getting us that equaliser. Sums up how he's been performing. He's been prolific and this is dangerous. Marvin Sordell scores. 4-2 for Coventry. Undeserved. Really undeserved. Tom King, you are disastrous. 
I knew this would bite me. I really did. And to be honest, it stung me more than once playing Tom King in goal. It's one of those things. You just feel bad for not giving youngsters game time. And Sordell really has taken to the opportunities, getting two goals that have really made the difference in this game. King, you're going to have to improve, buddy, if you want more game time. It's going to be one of those that even though you are a genuine moral keeper, I can't keep doing this to keep messing up. It's, it's hurting me. Is it fair to say that this was undeserved? I don't know, to be fair. But I will say that it is beyond annoying. My head is stinging because the amount of times that it's been a king mistake that's led to them putting it into the back of the net. Yeah, frustrating, obviously. I can't really say much else, honestly. I'm just shocked. Tom King has cost us another game. I said before that I didn't really want to play him that much anyway, but when I do, it just happens to do this, and it just so happens that we've got a cup game that we've got to redeem ourselves in. So, let's go play Barnet. Obviously, there'll be a lot of changes. Morrison will not be getting the time of day after that disappointing performance. So, let's go see the team selection against Barnet. Surely these members of the team know how to win a match. And this is the final game of the episode. Obviously, we're playing Barnet of League 2 in the FA Cup. So I can't wait to get into this game. More so after losing 4-2 to Coventry. But this is the team that we're going to go with. In goal, we're going to go with Jordan Archer. I promised you guys that he would be getting this game. Hopefully, he'll make the difference. Then in the left-back role, we have Paul Rooney. Who else would go there, to be honest? He is one of my favourite players that's in the youth area of the team so he will continuously get games and grow progressionally as a player then we've got a new starter as Christian Mabulu finally gets his first appearance for Millwall Hutchinson is obviously the captain and will partner him Romeo comes in in the right back he is an influential player when he gets going Evans comes in in the right midfield spot two centre midfielders are Thompson and Vibala I tried to save Vibala coming on as a substitute in the last game Instead of playing as I knew I wanted him to play in this one. Twanuk will then be the left midfielder. Been really impressed with every game he's played in so far. And Chetri will partner Jamie Philpot. I saved Chetri for this game to see if he can score some more goals. So, let's get into this game against Barnet. Hopefully, we can get a very good result and progress into the next round of this cup. So, let's see what we can do in this match. Oh, and here we go, the FA Cup graphics. I haven't actually seen these before, so it's a first exclusive viewing for myself. So this will be pretty interesting. Obviously, it's taken this long for the FA Cup to come along. So hopefully, we can do it right and impress ourselves in this Cup game. Jonathan Akinte, let's tackle him. No, we're not tackling him. And he's put one in here for Showman. Showman puts it in and oh my word. We almost gave away... An own goal there, which would have given them an early lead. Baller to Thompson. Ben Thompson. Oh, and this is to Jamie Philpott, who has this shot. But Jack Stevens with the save. Sunil Chietri is going to have to wait and play it to Fran Vibala, who could get through here. Fran Vibala with the shot. Great save. Oh, and we've put it into the back of the net. And I don't know who it is. Could that be Jonathan Evans? I think number 21 is. Let's wait for him to turn around and see. Could this be... His first goal for Millwall. That was a tidy finish though. I mean, the goalkeeper was a bit unlucky that he didn't. And Evans put it into the back of the net. And if I'm not wrong in saying, I do believe that is his first goal. And he's definitely deserved it. He tried so hard in the Coventry game to get one. And he's our first scorer in the FA Cup. So that's not too bad. And that'll be a goal for him to remember. Who has been very good at creating opportunities in the past. Chetri. Still going. Sonel Chietri lays it off. Oh, and there could be a goal. How on earth was that Jamie Phil? But of course it was. He can't score a goal even if it was open. I do really feel for him though. So there is a long list of scores here at half time. Some of the ones that I'm looking at now are the fact that Charlton are beating Doncaster. Sheffield United are beating Scunthorpe. And you've also got a 1-1 draw between Oxford United and Chesterfield. Chesterfield obviously second in our league at the moment. So, let's see how our second half goes. We have the lead, but can we extend it or will Barnet have a fight back? 
Well, judging by the statistics, we are definitely in the right place with how well we've been doing. So it can only get better in the second half. Pot to Ben Thompson. Thompson to Fran Vibala. Fran Vibala. Threaded through to Jamie Philpott. He's going to turn. He's still going with the ball. Philpott, can he score? Great save. Oh, and the follow-up was cleared away. Romeo might put some pressure on, though. And someone's down injured. Who is it? Oh, I cannot believe it. Son Ilchiet 3 is down injured. So who do we have on the bench to replace him? So we got Morrison or O'Brien. I'm going to bring on Morrison just for an experienced head. But I hope it's not too long. Why does everyone important get injured? I don't know. I really don't know. But some of them are coming back. When Gregory gets back, it'll be interesting to see how the strike force actually goes together. So let's just see how Morrison does for the remainder of this game. Get it away. Don't. Lay it off to them. Oh, so close to scoring. Tomlinson really wanted that goal. Right, it is full time. We ended up winning 1-0. I'm going to be honest, it was a very, very dire game of football. The goal was indeed just all we needed to win that game. I'm not going to lie. I am very frustrated with the outcome of certain chances in that game. But we just we didn't have anything in terms of trying to actually get another goal it just didn't work out so it's not the end of the world we got the win we played a weaker team some of those players now have a bit more experience Malubu played his first game and actually looked pretty decent so keep an eye on him because he might be getting a few more games this season so hope you guys have enjoyed this 10th episode of the mill career mode like comment subscribe and of course I will see you guys in the next mill career mode but until then goodbye